So you are a king, then, Pilate asks Jesus. On this reading that we usually get on Good Friday, but here we get it on Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church, which is an interesting liturgical holiday that was made up by the church to try to bring denominations together, to spur about unity in the church. And on this day we get a passage of Jesus standing before Pilate as a king being put on trial. Now think back through history. How many kings have ever been put on trial? Anyone? I actually didn't Google it. I don't know the actual answer to this. But do you, re- do you recall from history how kings get taken out of power? Is it normally by them being put on trial? Normally they live a full long life and they die and then someone of their family takes over, right? Or a, a, an estranged brother who's gone a little loopy decides he wants to take over the throne so he kills him and takes over the throne, right? So either you're killed or you die a natural death. It's normally what happens to a king. Kings aren't normally put on trial. But who is actually on trial this morning in our lesson? Because there's always a reason that we ask a question, right? Why do we ask questions? What? To get an answer. That's the easy answer, right? We ask a question because we want an answer to it. Like I asked, how many kings have ever been put on trial? And we're all like, I have absolutely no idea. I've never thought about that before, and I don't really know why it needs to be thought about now. Right? We ask questions to get answers, but is that the only reason we ask questions? Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And why is it important for Pilate to know this. For us to understand why it's important for Pilate to know this, we have to understand who Pilate is. Pilate is the Roman ruler who's been put in charge of the area in which Jesus has been brought, is on trial by the Jews. Pilate is the one who is charged by the Romans to keep peace in this area and to make sure that there's no uprisings. So why is it important for Pilate to know that if Jesus is a king or not? Because he could... He could what? He, well, not prophecy. What could Jesus do if he was the king? What would a king of the Jews do against the Romans? Rebel. They could rebel. And if Jesus is the king of the Jews, then Pilate wants to take care of this. He wants to get rid of this threat, right? And that's what we're looking at kind of today, right? Is there peace in the world? How many of you have seen the quote from Pope, the Pope recently about Christmas? that Christmas is coming and we're all going to decorate and we're all going to start to celebrate this season, but the world is not at peace, the world is at war, so Christmas is a charade. It's powerful. Christmas is a charade. We're getting ready for the birth of our Savior and it's all just a myth because what He came to do hasn't happened yet. Right? Why did Jesus come? If you read parts of Matthew, it actually says that he came to bring a sword and to put brother against brother and sister against sister and father against daughter. It actually says that. But he ultimately came to bring peace, right? And we don't have peace yet. So where is the gospel? Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And the real person who on trial here is not Jesus, but Pilate, because Jesus turns it around on him as he normally does and asks a question back to Pilate. Do you ask this of your own accord, or did others tell you about me? Right? Why is it that we want Jesus to be here and to bring peace? And if Jesus actually is king, what does that mean? If Jesus is Lord and king... What does that mean? This is an interesting passage to have the week before we go into Advent. As we prepare and wait for the coming of our Lord as a baby in a manger. 
But not only as a baby in the manger, but the second time that he's promised to us that he's going to come back. Right? Advent is about our expectation. It's about our understanding. It's about our waiting. It's about our longing to be with Christ and knowing what that's going to mean when it ultimately happens. While we still have to live in this world of hatred and war and violence and everything else going on around us and chaos that we cannot possibly understand, why does it matter that Jesus is king? And to understand that, we have to go to what John says in Revelation. John said in Revelation something that's actually pretty scary. Because as the men are studying the book of Revelation, it's kind of a scary book, but if you look at it in the right way, it's really not all that scary. But it says that he is coming on the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all tribes on earth will wail. So if you think it's bad now, just wait, is what the introduction to this is saying. And Revelation is a book that's written by John on an island about 60, 70 years after Jesus has died. To Christians who are now really under persecution by a Roman government that doesn't like what they're doing in their Roman land. And it's written as a prophecy and as an apocalypse. That's what revelation actually means, apocalypse. But it's also written as a letter. That's what this first, the first three verses tell us that it's an apocalypse. And then starting at verse 4, it tells us it's a letter. Grace and peace to you. That's the way all of the other epistles start. It's a letter to Christians at 100 CE, at the end of time, as we learned in the men's Bible study yesterday, and to us right now. And this right here, my friends, is the most important gospel that you could ever learn by gospel, I mean good news, is what is said right here in these short four verses. Because when we think about God, what do, we, what do we know? That God always was and always will be, right? Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is that that covers all of time and space and everything. He was there before we were born. He'll be there after we die. He'll be there when we're all brought together. But read actually what it says twice. Not just once, but twice in this Revelation reading this morning. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and is to come. Not... Grace and peace to you from he who was, who is, and who is to come. What's the difference? Or am I the only one that gets it? Or am I the only one that thinks that it's, it's, that it's really cool? Because God was in the beginning of time. We get that in Genesis. He was there to create everything. And all this chaos and everything came together and he created this world and all the rest of the worlds and the whole cosmos. And then he created you. And now you're here. In the midst of all of this terribleness that's happening around us in the world, and all of these things that we as a country fight over at this point in time, and all of the things that is happening in the world that is, that is making us tremble in fear and wondering if the end of times are actually here, and you're gonna, something's going to happen and someday we're not going to be here anymore, and God's still going to be there. See, that's what the good news is. Regardless of what we're going through, regardless of, of who's asking us questions, regardless of who's putting us on trial for our faith and our understanding of how we live and, and breathe and have our life and God, the fact that God is with us. Because it says it again in verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. Who is is the most important part of that. Yes, God was in the beginning, and God will be forever, but God is right now. The sovereign ruler of everything. Regardless of what's happening around us, God is king. Regardless of what's happening in the world, God is Lord. 
regardless of what's happening in our own lives and the terror that we're going through and the fear that binds us, God is in control. Is that always helpful? No. But it's helpful to know that. Because even in the midst of your chaos, someone else is there and someone else cares. And that's what Christ the King Sunday is about. That we are unified in the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, suffered as one of us, and went to the cross for each and every one of us so that we could have a relationship with God. And that God loves us and is a part of our life. God is a part of your life. That's the best news that any of us could ever hear. So go out into the world as we get ready to die, as we get ready to go into the longest shopping period of ever. We're already there. As we get ready to go into the greatest commercialized season that we'll ever see as a people go into the world not to wage a war on what's happening out there, but go out into the world to show them what this was really about. The fact that God is here in and amongst everything that's going on around us. And that's what's most important about now, as we await his coming as a baby in a manger and as a king and lord who's going to set everything the way that God has always intended it to be. So go knowing that God is with you and that God is king.